Hello everyone, my name is Hannah Collison from Inspire Creations and today I'm going to show you how to make the honeysuckle in sugar. I'll just share a picture of the project. Here it is. And if you would like to join in, here is the kit list. And if you have any questions, please feel free to email me on hannah at inspiredcreations.com uk.com. So let's crack on. So the first thing we're going to do to make this um, honeysuckle flower sprig is to make the stamens and in here, although it's not labeled, these are 33 gauge wires. Uh, we're not going to need them this length. These are actually cut into thirds. So we can, I think this will be fine if we cut these in half again. So we'll end up with six stamens. Although what, what we'll make is, uh, this one's quite uneven, so we need to kind of balance it out so we know we cut in the middle. We're going to make one pistol and five stamens. And starting with bending in the T-bar for the, the five stamens. So if you just cut your uh, wires into sixths and then we'll start to bend. So just take one of the 33 gauge wires that you've cut into a sixth. Use your tweezers to clamp about probably two mil from the top. So it's not a very far from the top. These end up being quite big if you're not careful. So clamp and fold that wire over. Turn it on its side so you can see the hook. And then we're going to close that hook up. It wants to focus on this, so I'm just going to move that out of the way so it's, there we go. And then we're going to clamp just short of the center. So if you imagine that's the whole length, just clamp short of halfway. The reason for that is because your tweezers have got some thick thickness to it. And as you bend, if you're exactly on the halfway of that hook, then it will bend off center and then release. And having turned that 90 degrees, we've now got a T-bar. Okay, so if we do that, I'll show you a couple more times, but if we do that to five of them, keep one clear. It's got five stamens and one pistol. So a couple of mil from the top, bend in a hook, flatten the hook. We're not trying to close. Ideally, we just want it to run parallel, but clamp short of halfway. So I'm further on this side than I am this side turn it 90 degree angle. So that way you'll find that the folded end of the hook is actually now pointing down. And then you can close that up so that it forms a T. So once we've um, made our T bars, using water and CMC, we can form the stamen head. So here, all I want to do is dip the T-bar into the water. Now the water will soak up the wire, but when you come to dip it into the CMC, just allow it to touch the T end, not the stem, and then you'll get it where you want. And I think actually for the honeysuckle, because it's quite a delicate flower, one dip would be enough. But of course you could then, if you wanted to dip in the water and back into your Tylos powder or CMC. So we're gonna do that with um, all of the uh, tea barred stamens. Then if you've got a piece of oasis, you can just sit that upright in the oasis so that it doesn't come off onto the surface. But I will also show you how we're gonna get the little dot on the top of here, because at the moment I haven't um, bent it at all. And I think because it's delicate, we try and do it without a fold, a, a little hook in the, 
in the wire. If you're worried that the powders, even once it's dry, is going to come off, then you need to bend in just the tightest of tightest little hooks in the top there. And then we're going to dip into the water. So just the tip end. If you need to, you can spin the uh, wire just to get the excess water and just the head into the um, CMC. And I'm looking at that thinking I might need a second dip. So we'll just do a second dip, spin that into the water and then dip just the head into the CMC. And that will build up the pistol just a little bit more. Now, um, in the time, it's probably about half an hour before we will use these. And that means, well, it's probably about 10 minutes. Uh, we need to clean, color this and assemble it before we can actually put it into the flower. So um, we're gonna have to be really careful with the dusting, but ideally if you let it dry for a couple of hours, then it will be rock hard and not fall off. So I've got a two centimeter diameter ball of um, flower paste, but I only want to put the smallest amount of color in there. It's surprising how strong this can be. Okay, so it's literally only a dot in there and we'll get that mixed through because I'm going for pale yellow on the inside of the flower and I'm going to use my petal dust to color up stronger shades of pink. Um, on the outside, so we'll just get it's almost going to come out a bit creamy. Probably on screen, won't even notice it. Um, you can see it's starting to come through, but it honestly it probably still looks white to you. Uh, but something like this, where you've got two tones, always go for the palest shade because you know that you can actually color up using your petal dusts. Okay, so just get that all mixed in. And whilst our stamens are drying, I think what we'll do is actually make um, a few of the buds and we'll see how we get on. And then we'll assemble our stamens. Um, probably let them dry a bit more and then we'll um, go from there. Okay, so the buds are going to be on 28 gauge wire and they're all different sizes. So to start with, you not, may not be sure what size you're going to need. Um, so I always like to kind of make one um, to see how it's going to come out. And then I can use that as a guide. So for me, if I said to myself, that is the longest one, then... Um, I know that I can either match that ball size or I can um, go smaller as I, as I progress through. The, when you look at the actual sprays, you'll notice that the, the sprig that would have no flowers on would have lots and lots and lots of small buds. And then as it matures and the flower starts to bloom, then you will have um, a mix of different size. They're not all the same. And that, a bit of a cheat really, because it's quite nice to just make lots of buds and one flower to go on the spray. And then you're not worried about breakages and um, it's less work as well. So here you've got one flower sprig. And if you know the size of the stamens, move this out of the way as well. Can you see you've got a long one there and then you've got shorter and these in the middle are smaller. And um, you'll notice that the shape of it is S, subtle S, and the tip, the head part is actually pointing inward. This is quite a good sample actually, so we'll keep that one, I'll show you later. So how we make them, so I've got my ball of paste. Just make sure that this piece is covered up so that you're not, um, it's not drying. I'll just pop that in my bag. Just quite, I know it's been raining, but it's still quite dry outside, so it will dry very quickly. So warm the paste up to make sure there's no cracks. And then we're going to roll an elongated cone. I like to use the heel of my hand, just press down and roll. I'm pressing down more on this side. 
Now, uh, we don't want to make it too thin because it's actually tricky to get the wire through. And we're not going to hook the wire. These are just 28 gauges cut into three. Um, if this point here is too narrow, it's probably let's go back. I'll just show you because that is a bit narrow. It could distort as I try and push the wire in. So ball, start of an elongated cone. This one's about three centimeters. And then we can push our straight unhooked wire through. And that's gonna go into about here. Because now what I need to do is pinch up the top here, leaving the top half a centimeter alone because that's gonna form the bubble. And then I can bring the paste down. So you can see it's becoming quite large. So this is definitely going to be my um, biggest one. So it's more, it's a technique it's called twiddle and twist. And once you've got that on, you can use your palm, so your heel of your hand here, hold the bud in your palm, press and roll just to neaten it up. It'll stop any of the wobble showing. Now, once you've got it to this stage, you'll want to shape it. So the first bit is the bottom part here will bend one way, and then the top part will bend the other. So that gives you your S shape. And some of them, depending on how particular you want to be, some of them do actually have texture on them at the top. So it's where, where the light, sorry, where the petals would start to form and open. So if you want to achieve that as well, then you can use your veining tool or a cutting wheel. And we just maybe lightly hold and just press some rock to create indentations. You can do one either side. Because the, um, the flower itself tends to kind of pop open. You've got one half and another half, one with the fingers, one with the thumb. You'll see that later on. Okay. Here comes Amina. All right, so you can probably see the marking on there, but I'll demo that again for you. So if that's my largest one, then I might want to do, to do medium sized ones, small ones. It's quite nice to have a selection. So this one's gonna be smaller. And this one's just over half a centimeter diameter on the ruler. So we've got a ball that's nice and crack free and warmed up. This one, you might just wanna use your finger rather than the whole hand to try and roll the elongated cone shape. And then we're gonna take a 28 gauge wire, which we've cut into three. And we're just gonna push that through from the pointy end into about here. And between my finger and thumb, I want to extend that down the stem. Elongate this head part a little bit, but it's definitely thicker up the top here. And then between your palms, just roll to, to neaten it up. Just that little bit of rolling pressure there will stop it looking lumpy and bumpy. And finally, the shaping is the bottom here would, would bend one way. And you tilt the head over the other way. So you get this kind of very subtle S shape. And with our veining tool, or you could use a cutting wheel, I'm just going to mark in two marks as if the petals are going to open at some point. So the smaller ones wouldn't have as prominent marking. So one press on this side and do the same on the other side. And it's it's because the, the flower itself would pop open like so when it's um when it's ready let's see if we can get a focus on 
difficult to show you the line marking, but this camera doesn't want to focus. I'll just reset it to see if we can get that. There we go. You can probably see the line in there and in the other side. So make a selection about 13 different sizes, um, not all too long. Not, not too all too big. This one will be in the middle and this one is about three and a half centimetres. Uh, this one's slightly bigger, four centimetres. And um, I definitely want some smaller ones in there as well. So I'm going to share the screen with the picture just so you can have a look at this. Small ones in the middle, more concentrated. I'm going to do 13, so it's not as many as there is on here, but um, you know, it's... Uh, uh, quite useful to know or see the real thing. Um, Colouring the stamens and pistol. We'll start with the pistol, which is the one that was just the single uh, tight hook um, as a ball shape. And even though these have only really been sitting on the side for about 20 minutes, they should be uh, dry enough to be able to colour. So this, this pistol is going to go a lime green shade. I have moss green and lemon yellow in my tray. Now I've got a lot of flyaway colour here, so if you want, you can actually use a separate piece of tissue to, um, you know, sit a piece of tissue on the side here to work your colour in, just to make sure that you have actually got the shade you want before you start. And then I would just be very gentle and just brush from uh, the top down. Maybe do this over um, the tissue as well, so that you're not going to dust, get loads of dust on your um, surface. So that's kind of a, a limey green shade. Just pop that one down and then you can go into um, your pure yellow or actually maybe it would have been more sensible to do the tea bars first because then we would have used the pure yellow and not have to clean our brush before we move on. Um, if you have got the wrong colour on your brush you don't have to wash it, you can just use a piece of tissue and run the tip of the brush up and down, not in a circular motion because you could damage your brush, but just up and down until you feel like there's not virtually no color on there anymore. And this time now I'm going to take some of the yellow onto my tissue and color the T-bars. So again, just lightly dust. We don't, don't want to mess about with it too much because if it is a bit wet, it will, um, it could come off, the CMC could come off. But mostly this should hold, it does dry hard. Okay, so there you've got just yellow. All right, so we're gonna do that to all of the stamen T-bars and then we'll assemble. So I'm gonna just show you how to put this together. Uh, we're gonna use the mid green tape for this. I'm just going to stretch that. So I'm not taking a super long piece, just uh, enough for what I need because it does double in length as you stretch it. This is a third cut 28 gauge wire. Okay, this one actually looks a lot thicker, so I'm just going to pull another one out. Third cut 28 gauge wire. And the one that you've colored green, which is the more bobble head, is going to be higher than the others. And all the others are roughly, I mean, they're not exactly the same height, but they're kind of roughly in similar height. And they're going to come in slightly below the pistol. So the pistol is going to be slightly above. Okay. This one's a bit low. So you've got them all in like this and the pistol's just on one side. That's important because when you put it together, the pistol is on a particular side of the flower and the rest of the stamens are on the other side. Now I want this quite long because it looks really good when it's quite lengthy and you know they do grow long, long become longer as the flower matures. So if you've got the set of flowers, You'd probably use the middle size today for ease, but um, 
you could make small, medium and large ones and the largest ones would have the longest stamens. And where I'm holding those stamens, so this is about four and a half centimeter, at the, four centimeter at the longest point. We can bring in our 28 gauge wire and that's gonna come down the bottom here between my finger and thumb. So we've got about this much wire to work with. Make this go a bit higher. Do that again, there we go. So position my wire. And where you've placed the end of your wire, which is here, that's where I'm gonna tape. take down the stem. Come a little way down, probably uh, the actual wire length here plus all the stamen wires is gonna come into about there. And then if you take the same distance again, it just helps because it stops this from pulling off the main wire. And then if you have a look at the uh, website picture here, you'll, you'll notice you've got the pistol is curving like the bud and these stamens will do the same as well so we're going to curve this way so from where you've taped get your finger and thumb and curve this way and then you might want to do the pistol separately curve it back the other way so you've got a bit of movement and then do the same with all the others, but then maybe use your tweezers to space them out a little bit so they're not all in a line. And that's your centerpiece, your center stamen and pistols for your honeysuckle flower. So to make the thumb part, which is this part of the flower, we're going to use a 28 gauge wire, cut into three and a small ball of paste, which is about half a centimeter. And this is the paste that you've colored with a pale shade of yellow or whatever shade you've decided. And we've got to twiddle and twist this onto this wire. So it's better rolled as a kind of elongated sausage And I want to put that onto here. So it comes almost to the top. You can even make it come beyond just to try and keep that sausage centralized on the wire. And then between your finger and thumb, you can roll down the wire. So this is called twiddle and twist, twiddling down. And as you're twiddling, you're twisting. So my hand is holding the wire, but it is allowing the wire to move within. So I'm not holding it so tight that this wire won't move. Twiddle down, twiddle up. It is surprising because this will end up being um, quite fat if we don't roll it thin enough. So it's got to be thinner. It's gonna look like a thin sparkler. So keep rolling all the way down. So that's about right. And then up here, I've got excess as it's rolled up onto the, um, and over the wire. So I'm gonna take a little bit of that off, but I'm just gonna fold the rest of it over and carry on rolling. So it kind of brings it back and we're slightly fatter at the top, okay? Now this is a bit bobbly because I've just used my fingers. So go back to the whole heel on the palm and roll side to side a little bit just to flatten what you've done. Okay, so it's a little bit fat there. And this is really poking over now. 
that leads us to think that maybe it's going to be a bit fragile if we leave it. So we'll just take a bit off there and neaten that back up. So it's only got a little bit overlapping now. So once you've created that, you can take any veiner. We're going to use the back. We're not going to texture. What we want to do is flatten. So I'm just going to put a bit of cornflour on the veiner, whichever one you've got. Uh, we're going to rest the twiddle and twisted wire, which happens, I should tell you the length of this, because that has a bearing on making the flower. It's about five centimetres in length. And then we can close this up. Now, some of the flower varieties have a short thumb, others have a long. I'm going in the middle. I'm pressing quite firm, but not wiggling my hand because all I'm trying to do is flatten it. And because it's gone a bit wobbly, I just want to run my finger along the side edges just to maybe straighten that off a fraction. If I'm looking at my cutter, you can see that it's a whole length and a bit more of the cutter. And before it dries, we want to keep this part straight, but start to curve this bit over. And it's a little bit tricky because you've got the, um, the wire trying to poke out. If you find that it really doesn't work, you can actually use a, a 33 in there instead. Okay, because the flower itself is going to be held. We've got plenty of strength on this wire. So if it's not working, use a 33. And this bit, we now want to put under cover so that it doesn't fully dry before we've made the main part of the flower. So that can go into your little freezer bag, something like that. So to make the flower, again, we're using the same paste as before. It's the one with um, just a pale shade of maybe yellow or whatever shade you're using. I've got that in my bag. I've actually been sitting on that to keep it nice and warm. And you don't need a huge amount to make the flower. So less than a centimetre ball would be more than sufficient to make one flower. And you don't have to confine yourself to one flower, but today I think you know it would be a good idea, especially if you want to remake it. And um, you can always add flowers. So the first thing we've got to do um, is create a Mexican hat, which may be something that you're not familiar with. We we'll need a little bit of cornflour on the side just in case it gets sticky. And you're going to start by pinching out the ball on one side to create a pimple or what looks like a little mushroom or the start of a gold tea. And this pimple needs to be kind of about the same thickness as this stem here, just a bit thicker maybe, so it's going to fit in there. Then we pass out to create the brim of the Mexican hat so you can see why it's called a Mexican hat. When you're doing this, use your finger and thumb to start with, and then you can progress on to using a tool like the back of a paintbrush, something like that. This is where you might want to dust your fingers with cornflour. The thumb will want to go right into the middle and the finger right into the pimple part here so that it's nice and thin. We don't want this part too thick. It needs to be quite thin right into there. On some of the boards, you do get these um, holes and they are for the Mexican hats to make the Mexican hats. But I find that often you'll get the stem into the board, but when you try and remove it, the stem ends up staying in the board. So I prefer to make this manually. So in between your finger and thumb and roll to slim that a little bit. This is the bit that's gonna be drawn down the stem. And then now we want to move on to a tool. So it could be just the stem of your paintbrush or a cell pin if you've got it. If not, cocktail stick, anything like that would be more than fine. And each roll, just gently lift it up on the side just to move it round so that you can tackle 
the whole piece in the whole piece. So when I'm rolling, I'm actually knocking into the center and coming out just so that I know that this area around here is not bulky in any way. Bit of cornflower on your surface. And then you're going to line up what looks like a fork. You're going to line it up so that the pimple comes out of the back of the fork there. Now, if you were not making your twiddle and twist separate thumb, you would need to make sure that this piece was long enough on one side to accommodate cutting this piece out as well. And you'd be cutting the whole shape out in one. And that would mean you don't need to do that twiddle and twist piece for the thumb that we've just made. So press down nice and firm, give it a good old rub on the board, rub the cutter to make sure that the shape has fully cut through. And then um, we can just tap this or use a tool to get that out. Now, sometimes the um, fingers here will get stuck in the cutter. Good idea to put a bit of corn flour to help to, in anticipation of that. Uh, and then you can find a pair of tweezers or your veining tool. Sometimes the kit actually comes with a little stick called a dibber, like a little, little um, a mini cocktail stick, but flattened. And that is can be used to be pushed through cocktail stick works as well. So now you end up with this look. Um, now, if you're having to go alongside, you might wanna cover this up because this next bit will just take me a few moments and yours might dry in the time. Okay. So once you've got your little, what looks like a foot or a hand, we're going to transfer that onto a foam pad and we need to elongate the fingers. So I'm dropping it so that I've got my pimple upright and then I'm going to use the bone modeling tool to draw down um, on each finger to elongate. Now, if you feel like that's going to be too big, then you can use your Dresden veining tool to do the same um, thing. So we'll, we'll just try it with this. If I hold, we'll change angles again. <laughs> just trying to get you the best view there. So coming from about here, drawing outward, try and stay central stretch out the fingers. <coughs> okay, so they've almost doubled in length. Be careful that you don't pull too hard or press and stretch too hard. That's also thinned the piece. And now we actually need to do it the reverse. So we start at the tip of the each of these fingers and draw backwards. And what's going to happen is that they will curl. So we're giving him curled up feet. Now, depending on which way you're holding your tool, you might want to work from the far end. Try and keep this tool as centralized on that finger as you can so that it doesn't curl in a strange way. So now we've got curled back fingers. The last bit before it can go on is we need to hollow out this part here. Now you can use a cocktail stick or um, kebab stick or the back of a fine paintbrush, something like this. A bit of corn flour on the um, back of your brush. And where the stem is, push in, hold on tight here so that it doesn't force the stem to break. So push that in to about here and then start to press. I'll just move these tools out of the way because it might help the focus. Start to press around the edge here to gently thin it, but also to create a funnel-like opening. 
Okay. Now, once you've done that, you're ready to feed your prepared stamen through. So we start by pushing the wire through from the front of the flower and back centrally through the stem. Twist it as you hit the resistance of the tape and then start to draw it up to where your tape begins. This is the time when we just want the smallest amount of glue, just where that tape is beginning here. If your glue's thick, scrape the majority off before you do this, and then draw the flower up or to through and allow the stamens to come through, and then stop when you can't see the green. This is the last bit now we need to press this stem to secure it and elongate it. So varieties, some are, have a very long stem, others have a shorter stem. This has come out quite short. You might decide you want yours a bit longer, in which case when you make your pimple, you need to make your pimple larger in the first place, taller, longer in the first place. So once I've pinched, I've got three fingers around there. I can then start to twiddle that down the wire, not only to neaten, but also to lengthen. It's actually the most alien flower, it really is. So we're neatening that funnel. So it's wider here than it is here. And now um, we need to curl it and it's curled Mm -hmm. Hang on a minute, we've got one more thing to do before. Do you remember that thumb? The thumb we made, that is gonna go on this side. So once you're happy with this part here, my tape's unraveled a little bit, so I'll just tighten that up. Take the glue, tiniest amount, a small swish along this side that hasn't got the fingers. Tiny swish. Pick up the thumb that you prepared earlier and where there is no paste anymore, so where that stops, that is what you line up at the base where you can see the green tape and you press on. Okay. Now, when you look at the bending, I just show you on the um, internet so we can find a good picture. It's a bit brain defined which way it curves. So, this is for me as well. Just try and remind myself. It's curving at the bottom towards the thumb, and then it curves backwards at the top. So, what that looks like with what we're making here is the bottom here will curve this way. And then we bring it back a little bit at the top. So you've got that subtle S that you've been creating. And the last bit is to tape the thumb together with the main stem. Tear that off. And there we have a flower. Now you'll also note, this is by fluke, that the pistol here is actually at the finger end. So before you, once you've finished making this piece and you're ready to stick your thumb on, just check which direction your stamens are. They should be curling towards the fingers. So once the flowers are finished, they leave a seed pod behind a, a hip. And these are really easy to make. You can um, pre-color your paste red, or you could uh, make the berries just out of the same color, just for ease. And you can do maybe one, three, four, five, it's about, about seven. 
would be fine. So there's about seven balls there. They're all kind of pip size, under half a centimeter. And then you could put them onto 33 gauge wires again, and they don't have to be overly long, but I probably keep these as third cut or quarter cut. And the great thing about this is all you need to do is just simply push the wire through, make it come so it almost peeks out the top, but doesn't break through the skin, and give it one, two rolls, and you've got yourself a little C pod. These are actually shiny as well. So push in just so that it's slightly sticking out the end. Twist. Go again. I'll show you how these are put together as well. So push through the ball, make it so that it almost tears through the paste, but not quite. A couple of twists so it becomes oval in shape. So they're quite quick, these. I'm just going to do six. I've run out of one out. Oh. No, so I've run out of wire scroll. So now uh, we need to tape these together. So we'll take our Nile green tape and gather the berries. So maybe put one higher up then the next one, then the next one. Rule of thumb really aim for this tip to be halfway on that one. Same for this one as you build up your stem. And we can um, tape these a little bit as we go. So just wrap a bit of tape over and then carry on. And they, you can see these berries from all angles. So you want to secure them in a way that from all sides it looks Okay, another twist and the last berry. So six berries, you can do more uh, and they would all come in. And these you would just dust with um, red petal dust. So those are all your components. We're now at the coloring stage. So for the leaves, uh, we're just going to make a, a couple just um, so you can see how they're made. You can, they're made manually without a cutter, but they are using a veiner if you want. So we can roll the piece of paste. I've just colored this with foliage green or maybe a touch of gooseberry green as well. Roll it across one of your ridges and then peel it off so you can see the ridge. And then you can use your scissors to cut a shape that is leaf-like. Uh, because they haven't got any serrated edges, or you may well have a leaf cutter that you can use. Uh, but we just want a kind of a oval leaf shape. Like so. You could use a cutting wheel for this as well. I've got a fatter end here where I'm going to insert the wire. So the ridge, the fatter part of the ridge is where the wire is going in. And use a 28 gauge wire to feed through. Pinch as you, at the entrance where you're going to put the wire in, choose the straightest, neatest end of the wire. If the tape starts to peel, then you can twist the tape as you insert it. And that should stop the paper peeling and then we just keep the pinching pressure as we push through and I'm going to stop about here so quite high up and that then can be veined either with the honeysuckle cutter or um, a rose leaf cutter or anything that's got this kind of generic uh, marking they're not overly textured so I'm not going to press too hard the ridge is going to be turned face down onto the inverted side. So 
So you've got, this says garden rose, it's actually the left side. So the ridge goes face down, left hand side. Press a little just to pick up the impression and then pull the leaf out of the veiner. So this is very close to the honeysuckle. And we just need to thin the uh, edges, which we can do with the bone modeling tool. Begin to use a bit of cornflour just to stop it from sticking and just to put your tool half on, half off the leaf as you thin the edge. And they really haven't got much movement to them at all. So we'll just kind of tilt it, just bend it slightly and just bring it in a little bit at the base here. And that is your leaf. And you can do different sizes. Okay, so that's the leaf. So I'm just going to set up for covering and show you how. So the flower, I'm going to tackle that one first because we've got the palest shade, which is the yellow. So I'm just going to take a little bit of my yellow uh, inside because I'm colouring mine yellow on the inside and kind of a crimsony pink, dark pink on the outside. So I'm just going to load up my brush with a little bit of my lemon yellow and draw the colour to support the stem if you can. It's better if this is dry before you colour and just draw from the edges, from the tips of the fingers, the colour down to the centre. Sometimes it's better if you've got, you know, the colour that's going to look you can see from in the inside of the flower, if you can get that by colouring your paste that shade in the first place, then you haven't got to worry so much about um, breaking them when you're colouring. So you probably, again, can't see this very well on, the yellow doesn't really show up. Let me try and get that a bit deeper for you. So we'd work on that area a bit more strongly. The thumb as well, the same, so from the outside edge in, if you can, without um, breaking it, just gonna move this. And then um, we can move on to the darker shade because I know that uh, the buds are going to be dark as well. I'm not so worried about uh, about this. We've got the paler colour on there. So I've got a mix of fuchsia pink and plum here. And I'm going to draw the brush. Be careful because if you've got glue there, it will show if it hasn't dried or if you've got excess glue. And all we're doing is just drawing the shade, the colour, the petal dust along the thumb backside. Then we can come either side with it. So I've been quite liberal with this because the flower's upside down, it's not catching any of the pink. It looks quite natural if it does though. So if you catch a few crumbs, it's not a problem. And having done both sides now and the back, we can work on the center and the back side. We're just going to use the brush to curl the color under those curled back fingers. And with a bit of time and effort, you can get that really dark. If you feel the colour's not taking, you could actually steam the flower, let it dry for 10 minutes and colour again, and that will make the shading deeper. Okay, so now you've got the dark pink on the outside petal on the inside. With the buds, they are pretty much all the same colour. So we'll go with the bigger ones will be paler shade and the smaller ones will be darker shades. So we'll just bring this one back in. 
you see here, all the way down, pale, darker. So again, just pick up your color, start from the tip and draw, support the stem of the bud and draw the color, keep starting at the top, draw the color down. And it's fine to allow some of that base color to shine through on the bigger ones. I'm just now touching the base going upward so that we've got um, a deeper shade, top and bottom. And the small ones, will be darker. And this is where if you wanted to introduce some blue at this stage, then you can make them um, even stronger color. So that's your difference. The buds, I'm going to take my pink and add a little bit of red. I'm just going to change brushes just so that I can come back to my pink when I'm ready. And from the top, dust down. Now you can actually paint edible glaze over these and that will give it a shine and we use that for things like making blackberries, holly, holly berries. But surprisingly these are definitely more red than they are pink when you look at them and once you've painted your glaze on you can do that once they're dried or whilst they're still wet it doesn't matter um, they will go all shiny and blend the colors, sometimes a bit patchy, which is great because then you get darker, darker patches. But just when you paint with the glaze, just be careful. Uh, it comes in a bottle like this, but I normally decant it into a bottle with a brush because it's like nail varnish and you'll ruin a brush. And uh, you do not want that to go on your surface. You need to make sure that you've got it on a, a tissue where you can blot and where it won't bleed through because it's quite lethal stuff. It's fully edible, but it will damage your table or your clothing. So the last thing to show you color wise is the leaf. And that would just be, they're very um, bland, the leaves. They are literally just moss green all over. front and back, supporting the back as you color. So you can see the difference, but I'll, I need to paint some on the back as well. Maybe a bit more than that, depending on how much time you've got. <laughs> 